Recording in progress. Okay, so recording is in progress. So yes, thank you so much, all of you that are joining us here today. Uh, we're still going to wait a few more minutes. To, to We've got hundreds of people that have registered to the webinar. Very thankful. I'm Bernardo Moya, founder of The Best You. I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. And uh, also the intention of being here today is to give you a quick preview of what the love event is all about. I've got a couple of hosts that are joining me later, David Fagan and Mass. If you're here, David and Mass, just bear with me. I'll let you in. In due course, I just want to do a bit of the opening, make sure that people are filled in the surveys, and then I'll ask you, Pamela, thank you so much for filling it in. Thank you. So I've shared the survey there. And if any of you uh, haven't filled it in, you still got time. If you're joining us now, where are you joining us from? Just tap it in there, put on the chat. Tell me I'm joining. We've got people from all over the world. We've got quite a few Americans. We've got people from all over, from Alabama, uh, New Jersey. We have people from Arizona, San Diego, Chicago. I love San Diego. Uh, Kosovo, great. Okay. I was saying that I'm in Spain. I'm in Palma de Mallorca at the moment. Costa Rica. Ay, que rica Costa Rica. Okay. Uh, from California. Barbie. Hey, Barbie. Good to see you. Uh, West London, Connecticut, Germany. Brilliant. Isabel uh, from the UK. No, she's not. Isabel, this must be another Isabel Donald, Donald Fagan. She can't be in the UK. She's just pulling our leg here now. Okay, so Karen from Germany. Hey, Karen, welcome. Oh, you said Arizona. Sorry, I just saw, I just saw US. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So um, for some of you that haven't filled in the survey, you've still got a chance to fill it in there. There's the link again. You can, you can um, just, well, literally complete it. Um, those results won't be obviously in the results that we have already, but we're going to run a few of these uh, events. Now, the reason we're here today is to share, give you a little taste, a little preview of the love event that we're running in February 2022. And we're very excited. We're very honored to run that event because I think it's an event that needs doing, that needs to happen. I've been running events for quite some, for quite a few years, but I just felt that we weren't talking about one of the most important things, love. And, uh, and I believe that the world needs more love and love is represented in many ways through kindness, through caring, and, but also about becoming aware and conscious of the challenges that the world has. Global warming, racism, hunger, um, people sleeping on the streets, homelessness, uh, mental health. There's so many issues that we need to address, and that's what love's all about. And that's what we're going to do at the event in February. So we just want to give you a little taster here today. Thank you so much. I can see a lot of you are still joining us. If you're joining us now and you're joining us, it's only a few minutes late. We haven't, we haven't really missed much. Just please. Tap in where you're joining us from. Please also make sure that uh, you, um, you uh, well, fill in the survey if you haven't. I've shared it here on the chat. If you would like me to share it again, I'll be more than happy to do so. Mass, Sajadi, and also David Fagan are going to be co-hosting. We've got a couple of guest speakers. Isabel is going to be joining us as well. And I'm going to be asking them to, to join us and... Um, but at the moment, I just wanted to do a quick presentation. Emilia's here, and Emilia is, well, she's part of the best you. She's my support. And if there's any things that you wanted throughout this webinar, any questions you've got related to the event, you can ask Emilia. Uh, she's going to be sharing the form. I've already shared it there as well. And if you have any questions, please don't doubt. Please doubt just to, just to ask us. So with your permission, I'm going to start sharing the screen. It's 7.04. That's obviously here in Spain. It's 6.04 in, um, in the UK and 10.04 in Pacific time. And if you're watching this as a recording, well, well done. At least you're watching the recording. Um, it says you don't have access. Uh, you feel that the survey. Okay, well, uh, please engage with Amelia. And if you have any issues with filling in the survey, she can take your details, contact her directly, and uh, she'll share it. Or we can then, if not, we can obviously then send it to you afterwards. Okay, so with your permission, I'm going to share my screen and just jump into a, a, some, some slides that I've put together, which is going to give you a little feel of what we've got going on here. So tell me, please, if you can see my screen. Tell me, please, if you can see my screen. And tell me also if you can see, well, the first slide, which is called the love event. It's just got the love event on it. Can you see that, guys? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Great. Okay, so the whole idea of the love event is to bring people together. That's what it's all about. It's about bringing people together. It's about real conversations about kindness, about caring, and about consciousness. That's what this event is all about. You can find all this information on theloveevent.com, 
and the date is between the 4th and the 6th of February, okay? Now that's what's gonna happen, that's as far as you're concerned, and as far as the possibility of attending, but the important thing, yes, the love event, it's all there, love event, the love event.com, but the love event will take place and it tends to connect with people globally and yearly to bring together the biggest minds, the top influencers, leaders, and thinkers to find ways together where we can bring love to the world, kindness, caring, and consciousness. That's what this event is all about. And I'm, I've done a lot of events, as I said before. I'm very, very excited about this one. I'm very excited about this one because I think it's something that you know we, we all need and uh, should be happening more. So we're running it in this beautiful hotel, which is the Blue Lagoon, um, which is, well, literally next to the airport. We've got a beautiful room in there. Uh, we've got capacity for five, 600 people. And apart from that, I'll explain, we're going to be doing a gala also on the Saturday night to recognize and acknowledge some of the great people that are there. And uh, I just think it's, it's going to be an amazing opportunity. Um, I will be sharing, that's what we're going to be sharing here today, because a lot of you have already filled in. A lot of you have already filled in the survey, and I'm very thankful and grateful. So we're going to be sharing some of those results. Uh, today so there's some there's some fascinating results i can't believe what people have said uh, some of them are shocking uh, but anyway it's an event to embrace what we ultimately all want what we're all searching for which is love it's an event to look at the world through the lens of love rather than the lens of fear an event to highlight love conversations give kudos to kind people and acts of kindness an event to create consciousness and educate people around the challenges of the 21st century because we have a few yeah uh, to be streamed. It's all going to be streamed on the Best You TV, which is also a great opportunity for those of you that can't travel or don't want to make it. As I said, it's going to be live. You'll be able to watch it in the room, five, 600 lucky delegates. You can also watch it online. You can watch it through your computer. You can pay for an online ticket with loads of, um, well, loads of bonuses that we're going to be giving for those of you that want to watch it online. But you can also watch it on the Best You TV on demand and you can watch it live. So that sort of gives you an opportunity to watch it through Roku, Apple, Amazon, Google Play from the comfort of your home. So I, who is this madman speaking? Well, that's me, I'm Bernardo Moya. I am the founder of The Best You. I'm an entrepreneur, an author, speaker, publisher, and yes, um, the TV producer. And, and well, I've been doing quite a few things in the personal development world, but it's the second part of my life. I started in real estate many, many years ago. I lost my money twice, and I don't mean it fell out of my pocket. I lost it, and uh, I wanted a new beginning, and that's how I got into NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I was promoting and working with Dr. Richard Bandler, the co-creator of NLP, for quite a few years, but then I launched The Best You, and, well, through that, I've done The Best You Expos, which we run all over the world, the UK, the US, and, uh, well, over a 1,000 speakers I've had the pleasure of promoting over the years, and 100,000 people have attended all the different events that I've done. Uh, it says that I'm a professional keynote speaker. That's very questionable. I'm a mentor. That is true. Uh, for experts of personal and professional development industry, so anyone that is interested in enhancing their career who wants to use a coach that will, you know, not pussyfoot around words uh, and give you also the opportunity to take advantage of their platform, well, I can help you. So I'm based in the world because I'm, I'm a bit of a nomad now. I, I live in different places. Um, I'm in Spain at the moment. I just came back from Peru from, for a month. And uh, well, I'll be spending some time in the US in the next couple of months. So that's, I'm a person of the world. Now, I'm going to do a quick intro to David and I'm going to bring him in. And uh, uh, because David is, is one of our partners and he's also been kind of a key, well, apart from a friend and a colleague, He's been helping me, well, tremendously with the love event and also my brand personally. So I'm, I'm excited and delighted to have David as a friend. And, and you know, he's been he's just a great guy to work with. So David T. Fagan is a former CEO of Guerrilla Marketing, which has sold over 23 million books in 62 languages all over the world, as well as the former owner of LCO Communications, a Beverly Hills PR firm that has represented 58 Academy Award winners, 34 Grammy winners, and 43 New York Times bestsellers. David is a best-selling author for several books, including Word Genius, What to Say and How to Say It, Guerrilla Parenting, How to Raise an Entrepreneur, Cracking the Icon Code, How to Become an Icon in, the, in Your Industry Through Your Advice, Image and Expertise, and From Invisible to Invincible, How to Make Your Presence Felt. David is working with loads of great people all over the world. He's an international speaker, 
in places far away as Dubai, Bangladesh, Kenya, and Australia. That was when he could fly. He's not allowed to fly anymore. He has shared the stage with everyone uh, from former Secretary of Defense, Dr. Bob Gates, uh, to, Mick, to, to Dr. Mark Victor Hansen. And he's not allowed to fly because of COVID. I'm only joking, he is. So I am going to bring David in, and then I'm going to carry on. Because I do want to explain a little bit more about uh, some of the people that I've got uh, here uh, today. Um, so bear with me. I'm just having a bit of an issue here, trying to find David. David. So guys, if you have any questions, please, if you have any questions, uh, please ask me. David, if you're here, just uh, let me know. Uh, send something in the chat because I can't find you at the moment. Um, unless you've registered with someone else's name, uh, just say something in the chat. David is awesome. He is awesome. Great. So, oh, okay. David is on under Isabel. Okay. All right. Great. Sorry about that. Okay. So we have, well, I'm going to, I've got you, I've got you uh, with two names, so <laughs> hopefully I'm bringing in the right one. Let me just, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll be back in a minute. Just bear with me a second. So have I brought you in? Sorry, guys, be with you in one second. Do you have any questions so far? David is one on, he's on. <laughs> David, I'm trying to bring you in. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Just I've got, I've got, I've got you, David, as Isabel, three times. Okay. Um, I can't identify which where you are, David. Just, just I can just see Isabel two, three times. Okay. So in the meantime, what I'm going to, oh, there he is. Okay. There he is. There's David. <laughs> so, so here, so here's what happened, Bernardo. Yeah, come on. Tell me, tell me. You did everything right. Okay. But I outsmarted myself and did some you? of you guys did the same thing. You, and so this is why we have three Isabels. So some of us were trying to work the system, Bernardo, and we didn't register. And so we said, Isabel, send us the link. So Isabel sent us her link okay. that she got after registering. So when we clicked her link, we all showed up as Isabel. Okay. So Isabel looks like she's in here multiple times. Okay. So we got Kathy from the UK using uh, Isabel's link and me using Isabel's link. Maybe Bell, Bell's using Isabel's link. So anyways. Well, listen, I'm, I'm always excited to have multiple Isabels. It was just a bit confusing. Okay. <laughs> That's what we thought. We thought, yeah. you know what? If we're Isabel, we're probably going to be able to uh, probably be able to get in a little faster. We might even get treated a little bit better. But here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm even going to change my name for you right now on here. Just well, so you won't be thrown off I, 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 normally, normally, you would have registered and then we would have let you in. But anyway, we're all here. So, guys, thank you so much. I'm going to continue, <laughs> David. And then I'm going to – I'm just going to – I just wanted to kind of share. But uh, – I wanted to carry on sharing the, the, the presentation. Just bear with me. No problem. No problem. Okay. Yeah, some technical issues here today. Okay, cool. Good to see you too, Loretta. <laughs> Good to see you, Furley. Okay, I've got sharing options. Yes, okay. he's trying to track you down as Bernardo's agent. He is in Spain, more or less. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we are. Okay, guys, so we've got some interesting uh, results here. And I'm going to ask you, David, in a minute, not yet, because we're, we're going to bring Mass in. So, can I leave it with you to bring him in and when, when we're ready? Okay, sure. Uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of things. I want to ask you some of these things because I know we talked about the, the event as such. So, look, as far as the event is concerned, it's <laughs> It's, it's, it's an event which is going to be for three days. We're going to have 60 plus speakers and we're going to have 10 plus panels. So at least at least 10 panels 
and at least 60 speakers. We're probably going to have a lot more speakers because a lot of the panels are going to have four or five speakers, if not more, on, on some of them. And then we've got some special guests which are going to be announced in the coming weeks and months. We're going to have some exhibiting tables. There's opportunities for some of the brands and some of our partners to be able to promote either their books, their services, or whatever it is that they do. And then, as, as we said, we, we're also going to be having the opportunity to, to stream it directly on TV, Roku, Apple, Amazon. So it's that's the main event. It's going to be a high quality production. I think one of the things I discussed with David from the beginning is, is the, the idea of really doing something that's very special. Uh, we're really looking at, I, I, I've been asked many times, Bernardo, what's the future of live events? I think the future of live events will, it's going to come back, of course it is, and it will grow exponentially with time, but it's going to take a little bit of time. But I think the future of live events is going to be streaming on television. So it's a really, it's going to be a high quality production where we're going to have commercials being displayed on the screens, literally every time there's a break, which is obviously streamed directly on television. We're going to have an LED screen behind the main stage. Um, even those that are going to be logging in remotely are going to be, you know, there's going to be pre-production meetings with all of them. We really want to have a high quality interview. You know, we don't want to have any cats, you know, any kind of green screen malfunctions, you know, uh, knickers hanging from the door kind of things. So it's going to be a high quality production. We don't want one of those with love Zoom disasters that happen. And um, so we're really looking at creating something that's very, very unique that becomes kind of a reference, really. And yes, there's going to be red carpet interviews, you know, to not only the partners, the speakers, the sponsors, and all the panelists that we're going to get involved, but also to the guests, you know, so they can share their ideas. So it's going to be a high quality production. And then also, as we said, we're going to have a gala. So we've got a gala on the Saturday night. So the event's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Saturday at 5 p.m. we finish early. We're probably going to have a cocktail as well on the Friday because we have to. But on the Saturday night is when we're going to just have some entertainment there. We're going to have an award. Some of the people that, you know, we want to recognize and acknowledge um, at, the, at the event. And there's also opportunities for people to get involved. So that's only for 200 people. It can't be for everyone that attends, unfortunately but there's an opportunity there for the gala. So David, I just wanted to kind of run this with you because I know we discussed it quite a few times. Anything you wanted to comment on these? No, I think you did a, a really good job. I mean, I definitely have some things to share, but I know that there might be some other times it'll be better to share that. Um, but no, this is, this is great. Cool. All right. So uh, the, the agenda for three days is just literally going to be ransacked from 10 o'clock in the morning till six o'clock in the <laughs> in the afternoon every day is going to be well openings every morning where we spotlight and highlight the speakers the panelists what's going to be happening for the day and then we're just going to have panels and talks literally every hour the talks are going to be shorter okay they're probably going to be around 20 25 minute talks the panels might be slightly longer depending on the amount of panelists we get but the whole idea is that it flows and it engages very quickly this is not a sales fest okay boys and girls and I love you, Americans, but I haven't been to an event where they haven't tried to sell me something and a lot of things. OK, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But this is not this event. This event is to talk about love. It really is to talk about, you know, kindness, consciousness. Now, it doesn't mean that the brands that are there aren't going to be obviously promoting their services because they will. But at the end of the day, it isn't a sales fest. It isn't to try and sell to you. Now, I know some of you guys are putting your hands up. I will come back to it when, when I give uh, David the mic and I shut up for a bit. I'll go through those questions. But this is the plan. The plan is every single day. Right now, we've got quite a few confirmed speakers. But the speaker that's already confirmed and he's connecting remotely is Ken Honda from Happy Money. We're excited to have him speaking on the Friday. But that's pretty much the event. Friday, Saturday and Sunday highlighting panels and talks every hour, 15, 20 minutes, speakers engaging and getting involved. So yeah. David, uh, before I'll bring, or if you can bring Mass in, if, can you do that for me? Yeah, I should be able to do that. While I'm doing that, just to kind of add to this part of the, the, the calendar and the schedule, um, I just want to paint a little bit of a picture here. Uh, what Moss has done, or what Bernardo has done with Moss and myself is created a playground. Okay, it's a playground with all the cool stuff to play on. We got the big slides, we got the teeter totters, we got the merry-go-round that goes real fast. But um, you know, it's it's really designed, you know, for us. And so this is not something that is um, 
hard and fast, everything in concrete uh, with a lot of limitations. Um, as somebody helping Bernardo with this, I've seen him hear a lot of good ideas and work hard to accept as many of them as he can. For example, uh, I know some of you guys have books coming out and you know uh, this would be a great place to do a book launch. You wanna do a book signing, you wanna have a lot of great people there. Um, you know, we're looking at having a book store. You might already, might already have a book out. Maybe you want to bring your book. You know, maybe you'd like to sell your books at the bookstore. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of potential for that. Um, in addition to panels, there's other places that are going to be creating these types of conversations. Um, there's going to be places to film these types of conversations and be interviewed. Uh, so, you know, this isn't just a place to come and learn from others, it's really a way to come and, and participate. And we want it to be very uh, interactive. Um, even when you're online, there is a certain level of inter interactivity and access to content and books and courses. And there's a lot of people that are volunteering to, to give things away. Uh, you might have something that would be smart for you to give away in the spirit of love, in the spirit of kindness and caring and consciousness. Um, and we have a lot of people coming to us about that. So, you know, be patient. Um, thank you for doing that. I know Bernardo is very thankful for that as well. But this event really is something beyond probably what most of you have seen or have seen, you know, recently. So really what you've got is a lot of different types of events going on at once. You know, you got a gala, right? While having panelists, while having keynotes, while having a, a, some exhibits, you know, while also having these dinners, while also having these, and it just kind of goes on and on and on. While also maybe having some book signing sessions, while also, you know, I mean, networking is going to happen no matter what, right? Relationship building is going to happen no matter what. There'll be some facilitation of that. And it's going to happen online. It's going to happen offline. And if you have an idea, and I don't always know if Bernardo should do this, but if you have an idea, you know, he'll listen, we'll listen. It doesn't mean we're going to be able to take every idea. But if there is something that you've seen at an event, if there's something you want to share, if there's something that you think would be helpful, uh, you know, let us know because this is meant to be uh, very inclusive right? It's meant to be very, very, very inclusive. So, you know, think about that uh, in those terms. Bernardo, when people do want to share with us their ideas, and that's why we did the survey, and we're going to share those survey results, but when they do want to share with us their ideas, where is it that they should go to, to share those ideas? Am I, am I the idea department? Should they send it to me? Should they send it to Moss? Yeah, to no. Amelia? Well, I mean, I, I think I think it's a combination, really. I mean, I, I think, you know, within the within the actual survey, there, there are is how would you like to get involved? And it also says other. So if you do have an idea or something that you would like to propose, just put it, please, in, under the comments or other. But you can also just send an email to to Emilia. You can send it. I mean, for those of you that David's going to put his contact details, Emilia shared her contact details as well. So, you know, and I'll put mine in more than happy for you guys to email us directly. But the form gives you kind of what you need. And a lot of you are saying, hey, I want to get involved. I want to support. I want to sponsor. I want to watch it. I want to I want to share the I want to share the survey. Oh, I want to be able to kind of like share this with my community. Look, we're looking for ways to reach hundreds of thousands of people. We're looking at ways of making the, this is going to be a yearly event. This is not a one off. This is a yearly event. So this is a kickstart of what potentially will or should happen moving forward which is, you know, kind of getting together, the things that brings us together. When I was talking, we're talking with David and we're sharing this idea is what brings us together because there's a lot of people out there. And we're not going to talk about vaccine and anti-vaccine and we're not going to talk about Republicans and Democrats. No, 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 no. We're talking about what brings us together because there's a lot of stuff that brings yeah. us together and that's what we want to do here, okay? Yeah. So uh, just quickly, Mass, I'm trying to set you up as a panelist. So I've sent you a couple of invites. Uh, if you accept, then I'll let you in. And uh, but Mass, so and I will. I'm, I'm going to give kudos to both of them, Mass and there, there's oh, Mass. there he is. There he is. So Mass uh, Sajadi is has become the foremost expert in the field of human potential sciences. He's a CEO and founder of Exponential Intelligence, 
XI um, is the physics of space-time, a groundbreaking technology that uses timeless frequencies to rewire the genome. XI has been shown to repair aspects of life problems and then unlock the human potential to achieve limitless possibilities. XI combined with masses unprecedented abilities and knowledge stemming from two near-death uh, experiences that have changed uh, the lives of hundreds of thousands of people throughout the world in record time. So Mass and uh, and David are partners, okay, of this event. So I kind of put this event together. I was looking for people that wanted to share the 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 work, the energy, and you know, put some 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 skin in the game. And that's what these guys have done. And I'm very grateful for that because I've done a lot of events, as David pointed out, and I kind of felt very lonely. So it's just lovely to know that I've got, you know, kind of these guys here with me. Mass, how are you? Um, I am doing really well. How, how are you doing, buddy? Well, so quite, nice disapp quite, quite disappointed, Mass, because normally you and I wear the same color shirt, but obviously we didn't get the memo today. Oh, my goodness. That's true. I, hey, I, I tried to grow out my goatee to keep up with you guys here. <laughs> I knew you guys would be sporting, you know, the salt and pepper going on here. I, I did the best I could in a couple of days, but I can see I didn't quite make it with you guys. Yeah, I, I did say to, I did say to him uh, the, I did say to him Mass that sorry mate that that that's just not going to happen is it? But, but you need a few more years be, on your shoulders yeah. like Mass and I have. But then anyway. you go through puberty there, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best over yeah. here. I gotta <laughs> give me a couple more days. I'll see what I can come up with. Anyway. So Mass, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for supporting the event. Oh, thank so, you. Um, we're going to talk about the results and everything else, but anything you wanted to add about, you know, you being involved in the love event and what attracted you to, to be part of this? Well, you know, we're always, you know, striving, you know, our group, our, our company is really striving to get into that higher level of consciousness because that's what it really takes, a high level of consciousness to, say, transform the world. I mean, there's been a lot of solutions out there, great solutions, but then, you know, they've kind of fallen short on getting us to that higher say, essence of love, like real love, like pure love that we're all seeking deep inside. So that, I, and I wanted to be part of it. You guys are really fantastic, you know, a, a fantastic group, uh, pioneers in leading that, uh, that, this new opportunity that the world is really allowing us to have. So really starting to change. And what I really love about this event is that it's free flowing. You know, we're asking you all to participate and see what you want out of it all. It's not just like, hey, here it is. Uh, this is the way it is. But uh, again, participate, guys. See what you want, because it's it's your event. Uh, it's all of our event to get uh, right. again, humans yeah. at a higher level. Well said. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so so basically, um, and look, the, 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 we're looking for people that want to get involved. We're looking for people to, you know, to suggest panels, to suggest talks or conversations around whatever subject of consciousness. We are looking for partners. We are looking for sponsors. We are looking for people to attend. We're looking for people to get involved. So please, if you feel that this is something you want to do, as I said, you fill the survey. If not, you've got the webpage, loveevent.com. Emilia is going to be sharing the information here. But if not, just tap your details in here as well, because we're going to be downloading the chat at the end. Uh, now, David, I'm going to ask you in a minute to invite one of the 16 Isabels we've got, but not yet. I wanted to go through. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Um, so if, if we only get the right Isabel to raise that hand, then we can bring her in. <laughs> but at the moment, what I wanted to do, we've got a couple of quotes here. Deepak Chopra said that about Kerry. Wait, well, can, can I interrupt you for just a second, Bernardo? Yeah. Just really yeah. quick. I, I, we've got some really good people on here talking in the chat and saying some things that I, I want to include, include Please, them sure. just for a second here. Um, I find it really fascinating how people define love. And since the dawn of time, we've all been trying to define love. And uh, I would love for you guys to go in the chat box. Like, what is your definition of love? Right. What, how would you explain love? Like, what is what is love to you? Give us, you know, maybe you write us a poem, but it doesn't have to be, you know, <laughs> preferably maybe it's like one or two lines. But I would be really curious just to see how how you well, guys go ahead. No, I was going to say that we it's been very interesting because we're actually going to share 10, nine or 10 quotes that we got from people that filled in the survey of their definition of love as well. So please don't. I mean, don't opposite stop. of do fear. It. Do, do love it. It's just damn good business. Love yeah. is being. Sorry, right, go right ahead. In. But there's some beautiful, beautiful uh, definitions of love that we're going to be sharing as well. 
So I'm very, very excited. Guys, you're going to love the survey results. This is one of the most exciting things about what we're going to be doing here today, uh, apart from hearing David and Mass, obviously not me. But So caring. Uh, as far as Deepak Chokra said, wealth is a progressive realization of worthy goals, the ability to love and have compassion, meaningful and caring relationships. So I love that from Deepak Chopra. And consciousness from Aldous Huxley, funny enough, consciousness is only possible through change. Change is only possible through movement. That's interesting. And then kindness, we've got Amelia, Amelia <laughs> Earhart, which is a single act of kindness throws out roots in all directions and the roots spring up and make new trees. So I just wanted to share those. We've got loads of quotes, obviously, on, on the page. So here it is. Can we have some drums? What do, what do you call it? What do, what do you call it when you do the for, for the roll. results? Okay, so drum the roll. survey. Drum roll. Okay, so we can drum roll. Who's excited? Please just tap in there. Yes, I am very excited to see the survey results. Yes, yes, yes. Type in yes, because you're going to be shocked, guys. Okay, great. Here we go. So now we ask what's, you know, when the world is trying to break us up, what brings us together? Which topics do you believe are issues and are close to your heart? That was a question. And here's, this is what we got. And this is the percentages in the order of what came on top. Elevating consciousness. Well, that's yeah. good. <laughs> Bernardo, so you didn't even show me and Moss this. This is really interesting. No, me and Moss is, is seeing this for the first time. So everybody who's seeing this, just so you know, Bernardo has been holding tight to this information. Yes. We've been saying, what are yes. these survey results? Yes. We're, we're learning for the first time. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm going to take a screenshot of this here. Yeah, uh, if you don't mind, Bernardo. <laughs> no, of course not. And, and any of you that want the presentation, you know, add your email address at the end, uh, you know, and, and we'll share the presentation with you anyway. So elevating consciousness, funny enough. And well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Because that's what it's all about. So we're obviously, you know, kind of on the money here. 52% uh, came back with mental health. Sorry, 52% with elevating. Mental health was 50%. And and, and that's that, really interesting that's very interesting isn't it and even uh, more than hunger that's it, that's uh yeah and homelessness that's yeah, yeah. it's and, and it's sad actually yeah. <laughs> uh to see that we're in that kind of state so yeah we really need the love event we need a lot of love events everywhere uh to you know to to get rid of that um, I was that should be a low i was quite surprised not not quite, i'm not surprised because I, it is a big deal it is mm -hmm. a big, big deal. Sure. The homeless, absolutely, forty-three percent. I mean, obviously, it's in, it's, every, it's in, you know, so the forefront of people's <laughs> minds. You know, how many people, you know, are living on the streets or don't have a home? You know, so right. it's a, uh, it's a big thing above racism. You know, forty-two percent. Uh, less victimhood and more responsibility. Very powerful. Very strong. Forty-one percent. Yeah. Human trafficking, thirty-seven. Plastics and pollution in our seas, 36, which I suppose, if, you know, it is important, but I suppose, you know, hunger and homelessness is, is further up and it makes sense. Gender equality. I, I was a bit surprised this was as low as it was, 34%. I would mm -hmm. have thought that that would have been a maybe, bit higher. Maybe that's a good sign, though, that maybe that's a good sign. <laughs> I feel like people are going to start to attack me like, no, it still means... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but maybe maybe people feel like it's getting better and maybe that's why they say that i don't know maybe there was more men filling it in i'll be the i'll be i'll be the advocate <laughs> <of> women <laughs> i don't know um but um anyway that that's that's global warming 29 percent use of prescription drugs 24 percent addiction 23 percent. i was quite surprised with that mass 23 percent in addiction um yeah. You think with mental health being at that such high level, addiction would be at a, you know, up there with that, yeah. you know, because, because, you know, you're going to reach out for something if you're unstable. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So, and then obviously, you know, a lower percentage there, you know, redistribution of health, 7%, slavery, and then some others that just came in, you know, very low numbers. So hi, what do you yeah. think, guys? What did you, do you find that interesting? Just type in the word interesting. Yes, very interesting. Thank you, Keith. Well, you know, Bernardo, use of prescription drugs and addiction, if you put those two categories together, I think it'd probably be at a higher level. Yeah. <laughs> According to the mental health, you know, they're probably going into, uh, you know, the, the use of prescription drugs. Yeah. Uh, to to, to <laughs> combat that. So, yeah. absolutely. So, interesting, yeah? Very. Hmm. 
Okay, and then um, and then we, you know, how would you scale? This is this is this is fascinating. Okay, I find this very interesting. Um, and uh, how would you scale the importance of love? Okay, one being, hey, it's really important. It's the most important thing in my life. Five, mm -hmm. eh, not so much. There's four things before that. So okay, fifty-seven percent, which I think okay, I get it because I suppose breathing. And being healthy might be more important to some people than, you know, being loved up. But still, I, I found it surprising that it's number five on their priority list for 27%. I mean, I would have thought maybe it would have been 27% for number three or number four. But so what would be number two, three or four for them? I, let me give you an let me give you an insight on this really quickly. And and. I'd be curious to, in the chat box if you guys think if I agree with this. I think Bernardo and Moss, I'm curious what you think as well. I think we even talked about this a little bit. But I think that so many people feel like because they're living without love or they're going through so much of life without love and they feel like they're doing okay, then how could love be so important? Because I don't, feel like I have a lot of love and I'm okay. You know, what, what do you guys think about that? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great possibility for sure. Uh, I well, think Moss, you brought up on a recent call that a lot of people have kind of given up on love. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was just going to say that a lot of people have given up on love because, you know, they look, I mean, you know, you grow up as a kid, right. And your parents are say messed up. You go, damn, I don't want that kind of relationship. Right. And you don't know what to do with it. You don't know. And then you get into your relationships and it's like, it's pretty much like say your parents are, you know, it's not lovable. Uh, and then a lot of people have turned celibate. Uh, I was telling you, you know, uh, David uh, in Japan, okay. you were telling me yes, in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. There's they're worried about depopulation in Japan because no one's connecting together and and the craziest thing is that they're having weddings planned out for themselves there is no partner they're just having the wedding party so, it's a, so they it's, still want it's, all that it's joy a, it's but a me day about me getting married to me yeah yeah and it's the craziest thing it's like <laughs> wow uh isn't that the saddest thing so wow. i think people are getting more and more uh you know out of their you know inside you know that internal connection with themselves and more into well i got to do this and i got to do this and then so basically people have lost that essence of love and then i think the other half is like i got to make money first i got to be successful first yeah, uh yeah. before i get into love you know that's just going to get in the way and gosh guys you, you know what kind of world is that if there's no love when you're making money and becoming successful and you're not enjoying it mm, i don't know that that's a tough one to swallow isn't it yeah, it's uh, it surprised me. Actually, someone just filled in that they got it wrong. They understood it wrong and they put five. So maybe let's hope that a percentage of those, you know, just got it wrong. Yeah, I, I, I think that I think that did happen a little bit. I think most people's surveys, they're used to seeing five as the highest. So we're trying to make sure they're paying attention there. And we, we, we threw them a curveball. Yeah, yeah. Although it does say one being the most important thing. Or yeah. Five. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it does say one being the most important thing. And five. well, we don't read directions. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's another We're thing with, uh, with society, owners. I guess. <laughs> um, Rosie's, Rosie's agreeing with you saying people have given up on love. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of people that are kind of agreeing with you on that, uh, Moss. Yeah, they're saying people have given um, up on love because of mental health issues as well. Some people are saying here as well. Thank yeah. You. yeah, it's pretty hard to love other people if you have like instability or mental health issues. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, say you're drowning. You're not going to go, hey, I need I, I need somebody now. Well, you need somebody to save you, um, you know, but if, if you're in that such deep of a state, you're going to be working on yourself first. You know, unfortunately, most people uh, kind of go about the wrong way of, say, working on themselves. Um, and then they, 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 what they do is they sacrifice those things that are, that are deeply important to them, including love, security, uh, you know, a deeper connection with other people, uh, even food sometimes, even I, like safety and shelter. I, I particularly, I particularly think that, and I don't know, I mean, I'm maybe generalizing here, but I believe that obviously the older you get and the closer you get to appreciating and understand that you're mortal, 
you know, you start to prioritize love, you know, and you start to appreciate more life. It's when you have a terminal illness that all of a sudden, you, you know what, that career change didn't really mean that much. It's more about me living now as long as I can and having my yeah, loved yeah. ones around me. I just believe that we're in a very materialistic world where it's all about accumulating things. And, Absolutely. And, and we've lost focus on, on what is yeah. it. And, I, and that's, that's what <laughs> I think it is. That, that's why... I let me, let me throw something in here um, real quick. And, and for everybody listening, this is a small flavor of what you're going to get at the event. You're going to get some panels. You're going to get some people talking. You're going to get people, you know, able to, you know, able to share. Um, here's the concept for everybody chatting, which I love. I'm just reading nonstop as well as you guys. Yeah, it's here, great. Bernardo and Moss. Um, yeah, we do have to to love ourselves first but it is interesting a lot of times working on ourselves mm -hmm. is more likely to help us find that significant other than trying to just focus on that significant other it's kind of like a paradox right it's almost like if you make you the best you you can be right the best you it seems like instead of chasing you start attracting is that just a law in the universe or how do we explain that? Well, I was going to ask you, actually, David, if you've identified the correct Isabel, why don't you let her in? Because we could do with some female uh, feedback in here as well. We could. Yeah, we let, could. let's bring some in and Bella, whoever you wanted to bring in. What I was going to add to that is that, listen, the other day for the first time, I've never seen this before. I saw this girl was at the beach and she had a tripod, okay? And she was standing in the beach, literally photographing herself. And I swear to God, she was photographing herself probably for two hours. She changed outfit four times, nonstop, <laughs> on the beach, in front of everyone, literally nonstop doing photos. I, it, the, the same take, the same angle. So she obviously loves herself, you know, to a degree. And that's kind of where I was just saying is, is that I think people are loving the wrong things. And by loving wrong things, they might love their phone too much. They might love, you know, they're living in this, in this virtual world where they're not really connecting with people. And I think that's part of the problem as well. I, I don't think technology is, 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 is helping. Well, what do you think, Matt? Uh, absolutely. You know, um, you know, a lot, I think a lot of people go into that paradigm, like if it's not liked or if it's not on Instagram, you know, or social media, uh, it's not real. <laughs> you know, they think, they think, uh, I think social media is more real than their actual life here. You know, and they're always like wanting that like or being wanting to be liked or wanting to be part of the herd. Um, you really don't want to do that, obviously. You know, um, it's okay to be on there, but, you know, you want to be not trying to find yourself in social media, but to define yourself, uh, you know, when you're posting those pictures. So um, there, there's this one that says, love yourself first. Uh, and... Um, uh, there was another one here too from uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. It's like uh, you attract not what you want. Uh, yeah, you, you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are, Dr. Wayne Dyer, which is really true. And I, I totally agree with that. So if you're saying love yourself first, what's your definition of love? You know, what's your definition? Of, and we went through that. Is that an optimal definition of love? So I think we got to get back into, you know, the foundation of all that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and, and thank you, Mass, for that. And, and mm -hmm. as you're quite rightly pointing out, look, the subjects that people are submitting on the forms and what mm -hmm. we're discussing here are part of the conversations we're going to have. And we're going to bring all sorts yeah. of things to discuss these subjects because, you know, we're not going to be talking about all of them. We're going to bring all sorts of experts who are going to be discussing all the different, you know, possibilities that we have. So. I will continue. I'm just going to see if I can bring Isabel in. Can you do it? Yeah, I wasn't able to do that. I, I think it's going to have to be you. Okay. All right, cool. Let me just see if I can find it out. There she is. Um... Yeah, but we do have some some great women uh, that'll be in, involved in this. What, We've why don't you of... have a look at this uh, slide, uh, David, if you want, you can start discussing this one. Um... Yeah, here's here's another result from the survey that you guys already took. Um, married, single, separated, divorced. And just so you know, I'm looking at this the same time you are. So I'm kind of like, huh, interesting. You know, so I'm kind of, <laughs> but part of the reason why we tell you these things too and kind of give you the feedback is people kind of deciding how they want to participate and who's there and, you know, what's the makeup of the people coming. And, you know, you can kind of see it's, it's actually pretty balanced. 
you know, there's, you know, within 10, 20%, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's pretty balanced actually. It, it is, it is quite balanced. And I thought, I thought that would probably be kind of the case and it is. Yeah. So Isabel, thank you for being here. So we got Isabel, which is David's uh, other half, the, the important one and the important half. <laughs> so here she Thank is. you so much for letting me in and be a part of the panel. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, everyone. I see you chatting in the comments. <laughs> no, thank you, Isabel, because I, I kind of think it's important. So what did you think about this? Uh, what, what was your thoughts on, on this slide when we discussed that there was a shocking 27% of people that, you know, kind of put it number five in the order of priorities, I suppose, money, cars, and I don't know, whatever it is <laughs> in front, or maybe I, not. I, maybe. I do think a part of it is that, you know, a portion of it is just reading the instruction, but whereas five being the lowest number and having that 27%, love is still almost a, a bit of an interpretation for other individuals. They do put other priorities before themselves. So out of context, love in of itself is just a little bit more elusive depending on who you ask person to person. I put number one as it's very important to me to love the person you're with, love who you are as an individual, love the work that I'm doing. Um, mm. So I definitely put one, but. Yeah, that's, it, that's interesting. Love, love the work you're doing. It's interesting that like, I, I didn't even think of it in that way. It's interesting to see how people are interpreting that, mm. you know? Yeah. Loving what you do is probably a big one for people. Yeah, that's a that's a great point, Isabel. Actually, yeah. Good thing we got a woman on here. Good thing we got a woman. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's good to have a woman's input. Yeah. So so so, David, what did you put between you and I? No one's listening right now. Did you put number four? (laughs) Money joking. Money joking. Okay. So, uh, guys, you've been sharing some beautiful. What does love mean to you? And if you if you didn't hear the question, you're more than welcome to type it in. We'd love to hear what you now in the survey we've asked this. So I just wanted to share some of them. We've got some beautiful ones. Well, it keeps evolving, which is true. Uh, also, love is infinite connection. Love is all there. Love is all there is. Love is kind, patient, nurturing. Love is the essence of life. Uh, we've got an acronym here. So uh, L for light, O for openness, a V for vulnerability, and E for energy, or language of various emotions. I like that. Um, it's the purest of feelings. Real, true love is unconditional, accepting. It's yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's a connection with someone, absent of judgment, expectation, agenda. It's not having to speak. It's a deep, beautiful connection. Complete individuals enhancing and bouncing off from one another, looking in the same direction, maintaining their distinctiveness. Love is strength. And in a state of being in harmony with oneself, and radiating this out to others. I like that as well. And the exclusion of all ego when interacting with others. That's, that's a great one. It's, uh, <laughs> the ego does get in the way. Um, and a feeling that it's all consuming and fills the soul and your being with joy, passion, and longing. So there were some beautiful ones. I want to thank each and every one of you. And for those of you that wrote it in the survey, well, thank you if, if, if we've read yours. So... Uh, I'm going to continue in a minute. In the meantime, any questions, anyone? Um, oh, Ferry, Fairly, we used your, your, one of your definitions. Well done. Great. Unfortunately, there's not a prize for you, but uh, I'll give you a personal thank you if you come to the event, okay? Um, David, uh, Isabel, anything or any one of those that yeah, you like? I, I, I love the one that's talking about radiating it out to others. I'm more of a visual person. And so when I think of love or acts of kindness and caring, Um, I see it as a stone being dropped into water, how you watch the ripples just slowly go out. And the more stones you throw in, the more it radiates, the more and further out it goes, the bigger the stones, the the, the bigger the ripples. Mm. And I see that when others are interacting, they're supporting, they're sharing, they're connecting. And those ripples just continue out further and further and touching other people. And even though in the moment, they may not truly need it, but the ripple still touches them and it still affects them and changes them in a small way that they may not even truly realize. Um, so, so I think that that one's just very beautiful, but all of these, I, I believe, hold an essence of truth. Mm. Absolutely. Mass, anything you wanted to add? Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I look at it from a very different perspective and, you know, I love all that stuff and Isabel, that that's absolutely true. Cause if you really love yourself, that's how, you know, you get integrity. That's how you heal people. That's how a lot of things happen in this world. And unfortunately, you know, through those graphs that you were talking, look, we're looking at, 
Um, I think back in the day, well, a couple of things, Bernard, back in the day, you know, maybe 1970s, I think the percentage of married people uh, would be a lot higher. Uh, and then love yeah. would be, you know, more important up Absolutely. there. But over time, it's like, shit, you know, I'm not finding anything out there. So I got to, you know, pull back in and do it on my own, unfortunately. Mm. And that you guys, it's pretty hard to do it on your own, but you do have to love yourself for that interconnection um, that's there. So if you put the two graphs together, and I know you can't, but, you know, the married, you'd have a higher, like over 50%, I would believe back in the 70s and 80s would be married. Uh, and we're moving away from that, you know, trending away from uh, and being, say, separated or uh, more alone, I guess, mm -hmm. even if we're in a relationship. Um, well, and also, I suppose if you add divorce and separated, I was going to say divorce numbers are quite yeah. low, but but if you yeah. add together divorce and separated, although it is different. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, divorce, separated, you add all those, you know, back in the day, they would be over. 50%. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, again, that's what's happening, right? We're trending, we're seeing that love isn't really working for us. And we have to understand, really, why isn't it working for us? You know, what's the deeper meaning behind, you know, all this? Why, why can't, why, why, why haven't we figured it out? I mean, we can, we can do a lot of things, we can create, you know, AI, we can do a ton of stuff. But uh, as far as like human psychology and human understanding, uh, I think we're really falling short on that, we really have to figure out or understand who we are at a deeper level. And, and, you know, this love event, I think it's all about not just, not just going, yeah, let's go, you know, have kumbaya and all that stuff, but let's get down to the, you know, the nuts and bolts and the mechanics on how to generate love. Cause, cause all those things uh, that you guys are all talking about, it's really beautiful, but let's get to the nuts and bolts. Let's get to the physics on why love is. Well, uh, and, and I know it sounds boring. I just but, know, and but it's, it's it's the whole idea behind it, isn't it, Mass? And, yeah. and that's kind of what it is, isn't it? It's, it's having yeah. these conversations. And I'm just gonna just a very quick one because I want I want to poke the dragon a little bit here. I already mm -hmm. had a little chat with David about this subject. So, guys, I went to Peru. I I I, I did an ayahuasca there, and I had a, a spiritual awakening. I had to Google what that meant. I didn't know what it meant. It was I thought this was just a myth about spiritual awakening, but I my spirit woke up while I was over there. So it was very special for me. And uh, funny enough, one of the things I've been talking about, especially now, so this love event came to my mind before the before I went to, to Peru. It was already in, in the cards. I'm actually writing a book or two around love. So it was already in the cards, but after my experience and, and, and how my, you know, my ayahuasca experience, it, what really came from it was love. It, it was all about love. And then that's ultimately what came from for me from that. But then, funny enough, I had a book to read, which I didn't want to read till after, which was about how, uh, how to change your mind, the power of psychedelics, which is from Michael Pollan. It's a great book. I find it fascinating. And I was talking to David about how, and this is one of the, the panels that I definitely wanted to have, or hopefully we will have, at the moment it's winning, so we will have, is how do we elevate our consciousness? And this book is all about that. And, and he, Michael Pollan studies, you know, how the did LSD in the 60s and the 70s and how a lot of the guys that did it how they elevated their consciousness and how it's triggered and created multi-billion dollar companies nowadays and then kind of like David was saying well okay yes but you know we have to be careful here because we have to bring people that can talk about you know kind of the the concerns or you know the things we have to take into account you know if you did decide to go down that route but elevating consciousness let's just discuss that one very quickly what's your thoughts on it yeah, Bernardo, will you also let <laughs> Bella Bella in as 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 well? Um, sure. Because you want to, I think you, you need to be do that. Yeah, yeah, Moss, go ahead. I know you have something to say, and I'll I'll go after oh. you. <laughs> uh, elevating consciousness, sure, and that's what we all do here. Uh, is try to elevate consciousness. Uh, um, well, one, I think we have to define what consciousness is. So, you know, we need to get on the same page, and a lot of us think it's just being awakened or, or being in love. Uh, I have a very different definition of consciousness. So the first key to elevating consciousness is, again, understanding a true definition of what consciousness is. Mm. Yeah. And that's, that, that's, yeah, for, that's what we talk about, isn't it? Yeah. For, for me, to kind of go hand in hand with that is it's, it's really an awareness. Like a lot of times people want to change. But if you don't even know what's wrong or you don't even know what you're doing that leads to, you know, some of these common pitfalls, 
then you know how, how how can you ever change that if you don't if you don't even know what you're doing like we don't know what we don't know and i think that's where you know moss comes back into play again as you know beyond that awareness finding that awareness the ability to stay in that awareness because sometimes too it's like you use the word i was you know i had a spiritual awakening yes well let me say something that probably a lot of people haven't heard you could go back to sleep it's not like once you're awakened you're awakened forever mm-hmm. right you could be lulled right back into sleep of the humdrum of the world and and you know so some of us have awakening and and another awakening and a state of awareness and and now they're aware physically yeah. but then they're aware mentally and then they're aware emotionally and you know so there's a lot of things that come into that um Moss, I know you probably have a comment on that, but I want to get Bella up here too. So go, oh, go ahead and comment. No, if you have something, go ahead. But then I, I want to introduce Bella here. Oh, no, that's totally true. Like, how do you know what you want or what you're going after if you don't know what you want? You know, you you have to have a goal, right? Uh, and like, how do you know when you get there that you have it if you don't know specifically what it is? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I brought on Bella, you're on, you're on mute, um, but Bella, you know, works with uh, couples and she works with individuals and she is an expert in a topic that is quite often uh, misunderstood or has been commercialized in kind of incorrect ways. And, you know, that is the world of Tantra. And of course, when people think of Tantra, Bella, what do they think of when they think of Tantra? Sex. <laughs> they think of sex yeah. And, yeah. and that is a big part of it and bella you know very much understands every element of the tantra world but you kind of have your your own spin on it and kind of have been developing your own world and have your own tv show coming out about it that'll be on the the best you uh, network like masa's show is <laughs> but maybe you can tell us kind of your definition of tantra and how it connects to the love world and how it's more than just a couple thing thank you so much david i will try and do my best to be cliff note version i in my 20s realized that there was something huge missing from my life spent months and months in indian ashrams and studying with people all over the world to discover that and ultimately it was a tantric experience in teachers that helped me to finally feel the resonance and the channel of love that actually flows through me so it wasn't about for me falling in love with myself per se it was i started to have these unbelievable experiences and waves of a feeling that's indescribable that connected me to absolutely everybody and everything and it all sounds very esoteric and unbelievable but once you have a taste of the essence of love it changes you forever and so for me love is so much further on than man woman 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 man man it's an experiential aspect of what it is to be human and remember where we came from because for me and this is my own belief and experience we come from love we will return to love and sometimes as humans we actually drink from the river of forgetfulness so once you're able to reconnect to the to the source that's everything that feeling just flows through you all the time and then that's what you send out to everybody else including yourself animals people and it becomes almost impossible to hurt another person not that i don't sometimes do things unconsciously and feel terrible about that but it becomes ever so much more difficult because when you hurt another you're hurting yourself and vice versa and so for me love is is everything that we are and everything else for me is more of an illusion I still enjoy the illusion. I still like doing my hair and putting on nice clothes and going out for dinner and going to the beach with my friends. I love all of that. However, at the end of the day, the only thing that actually matters to me is love. Well, you're in the right place, Bella. (laughs) And we're we're delighted to have you. And, and, And that's the thing. The thing is, is, you know, love 
is represented in so many ways and and i love obviously kind of what you're bringing um and um and and we're just very excited about you know all the different conversations we're going to have um and we've only got three days so i wanted to i'm a bit conscious of time now uh and what i wanted to kind of share for those of you please carry on typing in if you've got any questions for us i know amelia has been sharing the survey and we've got the web page www.theloveevent.com but look the the Bottom line is, is that you, you, you can get involved. You, you can get involved. You can have a presence. You can have a table there if you wanted to. You could partner with us if you wanted to get involved and, and become a you know, partner like, like, like David and Massa, which are supporting you know, heavily and strongly you know, the events. And also, you might have people yourselves that you might want to suggest that want to speak at the event, that might want to get involved in the event. You might have even brands that might want to get involved in, and who knows, and maybe sponsoring the event. So kind of like, you know, there's all sorts of possibilities there and we would love to kind of you know get as many of you involved in whatever way you want even sharing the survey if you've got a list and you want to share the survey it would mean a lot to us if you wanted to kind of share the web page it would mean a lot to us as well um so i is there anything else you wanted to add to this as far as getting involved david or mass i'll make one quick comment you know i've seen people in the chat you know uh disagree um, somebody even disagreed with me and I thought that it was good to kind of highlight that because, you know, what does real conversations mean? And, you know, we're focusing on being together. It doesn't mean that we're all going to agree. It just means Absolutely. that we're holding space for each other so that we can share what our thoughts and ideas are. There are times where I tell Moss, like, oh, I don't know about that, Moss. It's like, <laughs> but I'm not saying no. It's like, almost like, tell me more, right? And he right. tells me more. And sometimes he wins me over. And I'm like, okay, okay, I see what you're saying, you know, and, and vice versa. You know, there might Absolutely. be times someone disagrees with me and I explain where I'm coming from. So the feeling that's happening here right now and the feeling that's happening in the chat, I just kind of want to celebrate that. I want to leave that on a positive note. This isn't about us all having to agree you know this is about us sharing our beliefs and sharing why we believe what we believe and having kindness right and caring enough to listen and being conscious and and we're talking about how do we elevate that well we elevate that through these types of conversations you know mm, and and that's really what we want to do is we want to win people over not force people into submission Right. We want to we want to be long suffering and win them over and share these ideas. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm excited about the event. Bernardo, thank you. I know we are running a little over on time, but I, I just wanted to end with the positive note of that, because I think that's what you're creating here and what you're letting us be a part of. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed and honored to have you guys. I know someone was just asking, it does, the survey is going to continue to run, okay? This is an ongoing survey till the event. Eventually, I suppose at this rate, we're probably going to have close to a couple of thousand people, if not four or 5,000, who knows? Uh, so the survey is going to continue. Please share it if you have it. Uh, if, if for whatever <laughs> reason, again, if you wanted to get in touch with us, if you wanted the, the presentation, please put your email address in and just, you know, just type in your email and we'll understand that you want to receive it. Uh, I just wanted to highlight as well, a couple of other speakers are going to get involved. There's other people here. So that are going to be involved either in panels, Michelle Dewsbury, Alison Larson. We've obviously, we already mentioned Ken Honda, uh, Jeff. Some of the people don't even know that they're speaking at the event, but we've highlighted them anyway. Judy Murphy. <laughs> so we've got some, so we've got some great people, but there's loads more that are coming. And, um, and yeah, I think final questions, really, if anyone or Isabel, if you wanted to add anything else, Mass, if you wanted to add anything else, Bella. Uh, but if not, um, please ask us any questions on the chat. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm going to piggyback a little bit on what David was said about just holding the space for each other. We're really able to not feel like we have to hash out a debate. But we can gently share our opinion of where we're coming from and just being genuinely intrigued of, I don't believe this statement, but please tell me more because I want to understand where you're coming from. And so this love event is just lovingly full of care and kindness. You know, the, you know, the, the three main components of the love event that you're able to come in and just really participate and feel like you're being involved and not feel like you're being shut down. So it's a beautiful space that has been created and I look forward to seeing all of you there. Brilliant, thank you so much Isabel, thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I really love uh, what Dave and Isabel said. And, you know, if, if you're really a loving person, you would just observe someone's, you know, belief systems, attitudes without any judgment, right? Because it's like, oh, that's that's the way it is. So, uh, so I, I think you could kind of measure how much love you have in yourself. If you're, you know, seeing things and it's like, no, he's all wrong uh, or they're all wrong. Um, you know, I'm just going to stick with my thoughts, you know, and have that judgment. Uh, again, it's, it, it, it just kind of shows you how much love that is that internal love for yourself. Um, so, so understand that. Uh, and if that emotion like sends you off and all that, uh, again, it's all about you, so to speak. So when you start to observe how all these other people, you know, see love and, you know, see anything else, um, it really creates a nice, uh, it's, it's like a crochet, uh, you know, or a, uh, what do they call that? Um, you know, where, where everything starts to blend in, you know, and it's a, it creates a beautiful tapestry. There we go. A beautiful tapestry on all the different variations of what love could be for people. So. Perfect, Ray. Well, Bella, anything else you would like to add before we leave? That might be a negative. Oh, no. Uh, she's on mute. Oh, she's on mute. Okay. I'm sorry. Go. I'm having to use my phone. My laptop okay. threw me out. So really? I apologize. No worries. Um, no, I just know that love is everything. And if we all come together to share with open hearts and open minds, we don't have to all agree, but we can come with one energy. And that is for the raising of all consciousness. Yep. Brilliant. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, listen, thank you, uh, everyone. I didn't actually mention Bobby. Bobby is one of us because he's going to be involved as well there, Bobby. And we've got the founders of The Best You TV. So we have a few founders of The Best You TV. Mass is already a founder, so is David. But we've got a couple of the other founders are going to be joining us there as well. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank Mass, David, Isabel, Bella. I want to thank you for being here, supporting us today. I want to thank everyone that's been listening, watching. And yeah, listen, we're very excited. We're going to be sharing more information about the surveys in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but in the meantime, hey, we hope to see you on the 4th, between the 4th and 6th of February in Miami. And uh, it's going to be a great uh, three days. So thank you so much. Take care. Thank you all. Thanks, Bernardo. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank Take you, care. Bernardo. Thank you. Bye -bye. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I hope to see you soon. And uh, if you have any questions, please just drop us an email. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.